This is a quick demo of Citrix Unified Ingress. This is the diagram I'm going to be demonstrating. As you can see, the few components here are a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, in this diagram, it shows four nodes. I will be showing you three nodes. We will have a Citrix ADC, which is in the form of a Citrix VPX. I will be referring to this as an external ADC. And in addition, we will have the Citrix ingress controller in this diagram. Let me just quickly show you a few links. This is the developer docs for Citrix. And this is the page for Citrix ingress controller, as you can see here. And uh, I'm just going to scroll down to deployment topologies. And this is what we're going to be demonstrating. This is considered the single tier topology, meaning there's only a single tier of ADCs. And that's this one out here, the external VPX. You can find this page by going to a Google, a search for Citrix Unified Ingress. And this is the link right here that I took you to. And I took you to deployment topologies. There's a lot more information here, as you can see, for many different topologies that you can use with Citrix. Now, let me show you a little bit of my environment. I'm going to have a few things open here. In fact, I'm going to open up one more window for my VPX uh, because I'm going to show you some logging that's going to happen on this side, right? Um, but for my Kubernetes environment, I just want to show you that I'm running Kubernetes 1.15. As you can see, I have the client and the server version of Docker. Let me show you a little bit about my Kubernetes environment. My namespaces that I have, I have uh, the basic Kubernetes namespaces and I have default. If I show you my nodes, you'll see that I have three Kubernetes nodes running. Now, if you do a quick Google search for Citrix ingress controller uh, and then look for the GitHub link, you'll find our GitHub page the easiest way here. Now, within this, there's a lot of different uh, software, but if you notice you're on ingress controller, you're going to go down to deployment. You have a, a variety of options. In my case, I'm deploying this on bare metal. And this is the YAML file you need to deploy the latest ingress controller. Now, this is the YAML file. If you notice, there's a couple of different objects in here. There's a cluster role. There's a cluster role binding. Uh, there's a service account. And then at the very bottom, which is this section here, at the bottom here is the actual Citrix ingress controller. Now, on my system, I've separated the two halves of this. The changes that you have to make are simply the, on the top half of this for the roles is the namespace. In my case, I'm using a namespace called unified. And in here, you have to enter the IP address of that external Netscaler and the username and password of that external Netscaler. The other thing to keep in mind is when we do the ingress, uh, this field here, this tag has to match what we're using on the ingress. And you'll see that I've used I've changed this to the word VPX on this and on the ingress. Let me take you to my collection of files. So let me show you the role-based YAML. This is that first part of that CIC config that I just showed you. Uh, this includes the cluster role. This includes the binding. And this also includes the service account. And if you notice, I've changed and prepared for a namespace called Unified. If I show you my CIC, this was the other part of that YAML file on GitHub. And this is the actual deployment. And if you notice here, I have chosen to just enter uh, non-secret values right now for my test, but this is the default value. So I've entered the IP address of my external Netscaler and the password and username. And also, I'm using the tag of VPX for my ingress class. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you here is uh, the ingress. And if you notice, the main reason I'm showing you this is that I've used the same ingress class here. The other thing you may or may not know is in a Kubernetes ingress, 
you have to specify a DNS name. And so I'm going to be using this name, which I have accounted for in my host file. Um, you cannot put an IP address in, in Ingress. Now, if I show you my namespaces, I do not have a namespace. So the first step is we're going to make a namespace. So here we go. And KC is just my uh, alias for cube control. So if I show you the namespaces, we now have a namespace. Now KCU is my shortcut for cube control dash N unified. It just saves me the trouble. This is a cool trick you can do also. Um, everything I do here, if I do this, you'll see that there's no resources in this uh, namespace. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to deploy Apache. If you notice, I have here an Apache YAML. And you can see this is a simple deployment file. We're going to do four replicas. Uh, the name is going to be Apache-Web Server. Um, and the image is just HTTPD. OK, so let's deploy that within the unified namespace. Now, here I'm just going to show you a quick shortcut. Um, I like to use the get all command, but the point is you see now my deployment is starting to build. Um, and that's all we have so far. Let me just run this again. And you see that I now have four Apache web servers running. I want to show you one more thing. So if I do a cube control within this namespace for get pods, but I do an O wide, you'll notice that these four pods now have internal addresses. Now they have been scheduled accordingly on the two different worker nodes. So I have two on a worker node and I have two on a different worker node. The point is they all have internal IPs. So if I try to access this on port 80 from a web browser, for example, let's take this IP. Of course, there's no way this is going to work from outside of the cluster uh, because the cluster has no access to these IPs. If I, however, curl for that address, you can see that it does respond, but this is happening within the cluster. My point is I'm trying to showcase that this is a cluster local address. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to deploy the service. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a node port service that represents all four of these using QProxy, uh, using all of the node IPs. And again, we're doing it within this namespace. KCU is simply cube control dash N unified. And I'm going to create a service for this. And I guess I can show you the service. The service simply is um, the HTTPD service. It's type node port, and it is going to be on, on these ports. Now, what has happened is, if you notice my components here, I have a, a service that's been exposed using node port using this address. Now, in addition, this service has an internal address, which is this at this port number. So in addition to doing the curl, I should now be able to do a curl to this address on port 8080. And, and further, now I should be able to do a curl to the nodes address, which is this here. And let's see. This does have to be done to this port number. OK, and if we take this address and put it into the browser, this now actually displays, and it's coming off of, technically, you could do this to any of the node IPs. There are three node IPs in my example. Um, if I tried to do a different IP, which is not a node, of course, it would not work. Now, what I want to show you next is that 
the VPX, which is sitting outside of this cluster, still has no load balanced vServer in it. It has no content switching vServer. And so therefore external users would have to know this address in order for this to work. And that's not what we want in a normal environment. We want users to hit an external load balancer, as I showed in this diagram here. Users need to hit the external load balancer. So what I'm showing next is that if you deploy the Citrix ingress controller, the Citrix ingress controller, which sits here inside the cluster, will automatically configure the external ADC, and users will then be able to go to the external IP. So before we do all that, let me show you that if I do go to the planned VIP address, it would not work at the moment because there is no VIP on the external Netscaler. So of course, this is going to fail. Right? I'm not going to waste your time waiting for this. Now let me set up a few more things here. I'm going to show you here that there are no V servers, and further, I want to go into shell. I want to CD to var log, and I'm going to tail the ns.log, okay? And we're going to do this while we execute the rest of the commands. So here, what we're going to do next is we're going to deploy the CIC. I'm going to apply the role-based permissions. I'm going to apply the creation of CIC. And I hope you notice that over here, nothing has happened yet. And the fun actually begins now when we create the ingress. If I show you the ingress again, um, this is what's important. So the DNS name unified.com and the ingress class that we de declared um, it are what's going to allow the CIC to auto configure this new VIP on the Netscaler. So let's go do that. Now, I want to keep this up front so you can see exactly what happens as I do this. Okay, so as soon as I created the ingress, this is what has occurred. Let me see if I can scroll through here and show you the important aspect here. So if you notice right here, there is a bind for this vServer. And up here, you'll see that we actually added a service group, which was that server. And there's a variety of things that have happened here to build what you'll see now here. If I take you here, if I refresh this, you'll see that there is now a virtual server. Uh, and the way that we chose to do this is that we actually get a content switch, right? And the content switch is what has the IP address. And the point is now, if I go to a browser, You'll notice that this doesn't work. That's because, remember we said, ingresses have to have DNS names. For this to work, you'll notice that I had to enter this in my host file on this host, uh, only because I don't have DNS running in this test environment. right? But the point is, if I simply now go to unified, you will see that the Netscaler is actually converting this to this IP. Let me show you one more thing. You'll notice that the unified.com is actually going to the VIP IP, and that has resulted in this working. If I show you what's in my environment, again, it's the same thing we had earlier. We have four pods, we have the CIC, and we have uh, the service that we created. So what this demonstrates is that the services inside of Kubernetes, the Citrix ingress controller will take those node port or load balance services and auto configure the external ADC for external users. Thank you very much.